Hi everyone and welcome to a new video of Game Gear. I'm so excited about this video because we are going to make an epic PC for a very special someone. Yaraski has been a friend of Game Gear for such a long time and has been growing his channel for many many years now and I'm so excited to see that he is still growing his YouTube channel. Also Jan, I want to thank you personally for giving me the opportunity to make this PC for you. Of course I also want to thank Gigabyte for helping us with this because without them this wasn't possible. As you can see all the things that go in inside the PC are all Gigabyte Hours products so I'm really excited to make a build that is completely Gigabyte and show you guys what you can expect from a PC of around 2000-2500 euros. Right. As we all know, the heart of any gaming PC is of course the GPU and because Jan wants to play the latest games at max settings, that means with ray tracing on, DLSS and so forth, this also means that we need a really powerful graphics card. When it came to timing, we were of course very lucky because as you all know, Nvidia launched the 30 series and the 30 series has been a really big boost compared to the 20 series and this without a real big difference in price. Uh, so when you look at the previous graphics card, I think for the build for this I would have taken the 2080 but now of course I went for the 3080. If this would be a bit too high for your budget then just look at the 3070 series because that one is just as powerful as the 2080 but then for a lower budget so definitely take a look at that one. For this build of course we needed a little bit more power so the 3080 gives 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 X memory and the latest 30 series technology. In other words, this one has everything I need to make sure that this PC will last a few years and that's exactly what Jan is looking for. And I know these graphics cards are super hard to get right now so I'm really happy that I got this Aorus 3080 Master with the display. It's a really cool graphics card so uh, thanks a lot Gigabyte and Nvidia for making this possible. I really appreciate it. For CPU we're going to use a Intel 10th generation 10900K. This is a very performant CPU. Of course AMD has a lot of interesting CPUs on the market right now. You have the new generation, the 5000 series out on the market as well, which is very promising. But at the point of making this video, the 10900K has still a very good single core performance. Also, it has a lot of cores, which is interesting for Jan, so he can do the streaming. Normally, if you are just playing games, the single core performance is the most important aspect to take a look at. Of course, there are benefits to the Intel CPUs, there are benefits to the AMD CPUs. Just just do your research. In general, there's not much that you can really do wrong either if you go for Intel or AMD. So in this video, we are going for the 10900K of Intel. Once you've selected your CPU, it is very important you choose a motherboard with the right chipset. So for example, the Intel 10th generation has a 1200 socket. It's just the name, just keep an eye on which socket you need. The previous socket was 1151 and the one before was 1150 if you're looking for Intel CPUs. When you're looking at the AMD CPUs, you will look for an AM4 socket. Now what does this mean? Well, very simply, you, all, you have a whole bunch of pins at the bottom of the CPU and if you don't have the right pin layout, of course, it will not fit on the motherboard. So be a little bit careful and make sure you have the right motherboard. Besides the pins, you of course have different chipsets. I think when you're looking at gaming motherboards, you'll probably, for Intel, take a look at the Z490 motherboards. And when you're looking at AMD, you're probably going for an X570 if you want to have a more high-end motherboard. And if you're looking for a more of a mid-tier motherboard, you'll probably go for the B550 chipset. As mentioned before, in this video, we are going to do a build with an Intel i9. So we have chosen for the Z490 Aorus Elite AC. This motherboard has a bunch of features. It has a really good sound card integrated. It has a solid network card and it also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth integrated into the motherboard. Once you plug in the CPU, then we are going to take a look at the memory. In this case, we're going for 32 gigabytes of memory. I think if you go for an AMD processor, the best thing you can do is take 3600 megahertz memory. If you're going for Intel, you can either choose between 3200 and 3600 because it's mainly AMD that has a better scale with the higher frequency of memory. Because Jan does a lot of streaming and video editing, we went for 32 gigabytes of RAM. Normally, if you make a gaming PC, 16 gigabytes will be sufficient. 
Of course, when it comes purely to looks, sometimes it's just nicer to have those four RAM sticks and fill up the slots and have this awesome RGB look coming from the motherboard. In that case, you'll also have to go for four sticks of RAM or you can use two sticks of RAM and two dummy sticks of RAM. So those are fake sticks that just give the uh, RGB look but don't uh, function as a regular RAM. I think the price difference is not that big, so personally I would just go for 32 gigabytes of RAM if you want that 4 slot RAM look in your PC. As you could have guessed, Gigabyte also has some memory in the Aorus lineup. I took the 3600 uh, megahertz memory, I got 2 sticks of 8 gigabytes per kit, so we have 2 kits, that means we have 4 sticks of RAM going into the built when it comes to memory i think the past two weeks the memory price has been going up a little before we were nicely below the 100 euros for 16 gigabytes of ram with rgb now it seems that we're going back to the 100 euros and maybe a little bit above this memory is slightly more expensive so you can get it for about 110 euros for 16 gigabytes of ram which is still very acceptable and especially if you like this look once the memory is in i like to go to the hard drives usually because because we are now putting those M2 drives on the motherboard and then we can plug them in directly. The M2 hard drives are faster than your classic SATA hard drives and especially faster than those old hard drives. Personally, I think every gaming PC should have at least an SSD in it. An SSD is so much faster than a regular hard drive. And then now you have those M2 drives, they're even faster than your classical SSD. So my suggestion is that you would put in an M2 drive as a main drive you install your windows on it so you can boot really fast and the most important programs or games you also put them on the ssd if you then have a whole bunch of files or very big games that take up a lot of space then of course it's still cheaper and more cost efficient to also take a regular hard drive and put all the big files on there but of course in this specific build we are going for a big ssd m2 drive this one from gigabyte is available for about 130 140 euros it's one terabyte and it has write speeds of 2100 megabytes per second and read speeds of 2500 megabytes per second which is really fast of course you can also still go faster but you have to ask yourself the question do you need it personally i think if you are just using it for gaming any ssd will already be a big improvement compared to a normal hard drive if you are doing um, editing and so forth you can look at these kinds of ssds because they're faster than your basic ssd and if you want to even go even further and you're doing video editing professionally you might even consider an even faster hard drive but do keep in mind they are again more expensive the faster you go the more expensive they are once we plugged in the ssd for me the motherboard is good to go now we're going to take a look at the case in this case i went for the fractal define s2 vision rgb yes that is a mouthful it is a very interesting case it is an expensive case but it is a very nice case from fractal design jan asked me to go all out on the rgb so i think this was a perfect choice there's a lot of room in this case originally designed so you can put in a custom water cooling loop but in this case because the 30 80 hours is such a big card i wanted to make sure that there is enough room to put this card in there that there's enough room for good airflow so that's why i went for this case from fractal when it comes to price a good case is of course not very cheap this one goes for about 230 240 euros so it's an expensive case but it's a really good one it has good fans in it it has the rgb fans in it it's all tempered glass on both sides it has good cable management and it has a lot of options if you want to go for a custom water cooling loop so once we open up the case and we put all the cables out of the way we can put in the power supply in this case we are going for an 840 watt power supply gold standard now what's the difference between a bronze gold and platinum well the gold is the for me personally the go-to if you're looking for power supplies i wouldn't go for bronze especially not for the higher end builds in general the gold ones are more power efficient than the bronze ones and of course the platinum ones are also again more performant efficient than the gold ones additionally a gold one is more silent than the bronze one and a platinum one is again more silent than the gold one of course knowing how much power you need is very important regardless of the efficiency and the noise level for this you'll find several calculators online for free i'll put a link in the description of this video to one of them so the only thing you have to do is put in all the parts and then the calculator will say how much power you need in this case those 3080s are sucking up a lot of power so i went for an 840 watt 
not power supply which will be definitely enough for this build personally i also like to go for a modular power supply and usually the power supplies of 90 euros and above they are modular this means that you can just use the cables that you need and you leave the other ones out this way it is a lot easier to do your cable management so for this build we of course are going to plug in the cables for the motherboard those are the big ones then we have the cables for the cpu the cables for the cpu are very similar to the ones for your graphics card so do pay attention it is written on the side which one is for which so make sure you don't put it in the wrong connector because then it will not work another way to easily identify the cpu connectors is that when you hold them right in front of you you can see that you can split them in half this is not possible with the ones for the gpu the gpu doesn't split in half they only have one little thing that you can click off on the left side it is the one for the cpu that splits in half in the middle so that's an easy way to know which cable you are holding so now that we have the power supply in i think it's time to put the cooler on the cpu as you might have noticed the more higher end cpus usually don't have a cooler in the box for example the k editions of intel they are the overclock editions both the k and the kf they don't come with a cooler so don't forget to buy a cpu cooler as well when it comes to amd most of the cpus have a pretty good boxed cooler with the cpu for example the 3600 3700x and so forth they all come with a cooler when you go to really high end they don't have a cooler just like the uh, the intel cpus do you want to keep the stock cooler or do you want to go for a better cooler in general if you go for a high-end gaming setup i would recommend not to keep the uh, the original stock cooler the ones from amd are pretty good to be honest um but it does help to put, for example, an I.O. cooler on it, like the one from uh, from Gigabyte. It drops the temperature just a little bit more. It takes away the heat that is being generated in the area because you got heat coming off from the GPU. Then you have the heat coming off from the CPU. So it is much more efficient to take away all the heat, for example, with a water cooling, take them to the top and then blow it out of the system. Why is this important? Well, a few drops in temperatures can mean a few extra FPS in game. So the cooler you can keep your system, the better your performance of your components. So in general, I never leave the stock cooler on it, only for builds below 1000 euros. So the more budget gaming systems, you could consider leaving the stock cooler on but don't forget there are a few very good coolers for 30 40 euros that you can already use that are better than the stock cooler now when applying the coolers it is very important that you don't forget your cooling paste because without cooling paste there is not much cooling going on especially with io coolers so those water coolers that are pre-made usually they put on some cooling paste on it already so then you don't have to apply it yourself which is really handy you just put it on and you're good to go but be sure to double check there is cooling paste on it usually with the cheaper models either if it's air cooled or water cooled it doesn't matter they don't have the cooling paste but they give you a little tube to go on just make sure you don't use too much in this case we already have the cooling paste applied so i can't show you what is too much or too little but just do a search on google and you will see what the perfect amount for cooling paste is now that everything is inside the system i think it is time to do some cable management and this will take a lot of time i know you don't see on the most cases the cables on the side but in this case we have a open window on both sides so it has to look good i know it will take some time you can count on perhaps one hour or more when it comes to cleaning up all the cables that we have in the back and the more rgb you have the more cables you have of course so i'm really happy to have so much space in this case so i can easily get rid of all the cables now that all the cable management is done it is time to put in this beast yes this is the 3080 hours from gigabyte and it is a beast of a card so i'm really looking forward to seeing the performance of this graphics card as i told you it is a pretty big card so i do think it would be interesting to see if we can either make our own or look for a graphics support bracket because these cards are so big it could be useful to look for a support bracket otherwise maybe after a few months or a few years the card starts sagging down so i think that's something you can think of maybe uh, for gigabyte it could be interesting in the future to add a simple bracket to support the, those cards if they are this big all right now that the graphics card is in it is 
time to finish up this build. Can now close up the PC, insert our bootable disk. For Windows, you can easily download a version of Windows from the official Microsoft website. You then just put this on a USB stick that is big enough, then you put the USB stick in your PC and you boot the system. Normally when there's nothing on the hard drives, it will automatically start booting from the USB disk and you can install your Windows. Once Windows is installed, I propose that you go to the manufacturer of the motherboard. In this case, it's Gigabyte and you download all the latest drivers. You don't have to download really everything, but in general, download the chipset driver, download the network card driver and download the sound card driver. Once that is done, of course, make sure you do all your Windows updates, install a antivirus and then make sure that you download the latest graphics drivers from either Nvidia or from AMD. And then last but not least, the most important is installing all the software that you need for your RGB. In this case, we are using RGB Fusion because we have connected everything to the motherboard and then we're using the software provided by Gigabyte to control everything nicely in sync. So that's it for this build video. Of course, there will also be a video by Jan showing you how good this PC performs in the different games that he likes to play. So be sure to go to Yaraski Gaming and sign up to his channel. If you're interested in a system like this, but you feel like it is too much to handle yourself, well, don't worry. Of course, at Game Gear, we can build this PC for you. This specific PC will also be online as a pre-built. It will be pre-assembled. It will have Windows installed on it. It will come with an official Windows key. So it is all good to go. You don't have to do anything yourself. If you got any comments, questions, or suggestions, please post them here on this video. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of these videos, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Channel, so we are being pushed in the algorithm of YouTube. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Ha 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 ha!